Kevin. Kevin McCullough. Welcome back to Times Square. Kevin McCullough, glad to have you with us. I don't tell this story very often on air, but in part of my young adulthood, um, I was an assistant coach on the college level uh, for basketball, the sport of basketball. And I actually started my coaching days in the women's division of NCAA Division three level schools and eventually moved over to the men's division as a senior assistant in uh, a, a couple of different programs. And uh, Caitlin Wheeler rejoins us, uh, former competitive swimmer, All-American swimmer and SEC champion at the University of Kentucky. And Caitlin, the reason I bring this up is one of the ways we help the women's team get better and faster and stronger is that uh, one of my jobs was to go and find uh, intramural level players of the male sex that were actually um, pretty good and quite good against uh, people that were slower and not as well developed as they were. And it helped the girls learn how to play um, defense and offense and ball movement and shooting and rebounding and all of it much, much better. Now we had to go into those practices when, when they would scrimmage and we had to say, you're not allowed to throw elbows. You're not allowed to do, you're not allowed to play against them as though you would be playing against fellow males because they're not males. But the idea was that we could take intramural level players which were significantly less uh, skilled than our varsity players and put them into the varsity women's scrimmage for half of a practice one day. And you would see the obvious difference between men and women. It wasn't that the women played more poorly. It was just, they had a different entire ethos and universe. Now this helped our girls get better in practice. So when they played against fellow women, they, they did quite well especially against teams that were a little bit bigger and faster than them. They did better than other teams would have normally have done. But does this not prove that when you look at the two sexes, that, that there are distinctions that need to be acknowledged and that Title IX actually was set up to acknowledge so that fairness could be had? That's a great example. I mean, speaking from my own experience, I swam against males for my entire career in practice. Um, it didn't matter if they were great or super talented. Gosh, it could have been below average, mediocre male athletes that I was competing against, but I still knew that they could kick my butt any day of the week. Um, they didn't even have to be in shape at the time. Um, and I could be in my best shape and I know that they could still blow me out of the water. Um, and so really, it's, it's crazy that we're being accepted or forced to deny, like you said, logic, reasoning, and common sense. There's a reason why there's two categories. Um, there's a reason why men and women, gosh, even going down to like being prescribed different medications, um, it, it goes really in so many different areas. And the fact that we're being asked to deny the truth, to deny reality, and to deny common sense, you know, they tell us look at the science, we're looking at the science and the science is in our favor here. Um, and, and they're ignoring that blatantly. And so that's why it's just, it's just crazy that we're having to even have a lawsuit and to have these discussions. I think part of the problem in all of it though, is that advancement for women is in decline because this is interrupting that process. And let me just give you a practical example Governor Gavin Newsom in California has mandated that tampon machines be put in all the middle school and high school boys' bathrooms. Um, Caitlin, there's no use for them to be there in any way, shape, or fashion. Why are we, why are we trying to force fit this idea that is anti-science, certainly um, anti-common sense, as you said, and make it make it adjust, make all of society adjust to it, as opposed to taking the people that perceive themselves to be different in this way and help them adjust to what reality says, as opposed to what their mind says. It seems to me that the whole diagram is opposite of what it needs to be. Yeah, it's to me, frankly, really evil um, what's happening. Uh, I think children really are being targeted here. Like you said, they're being forced to swallow lies, really, um, and confusing children, um, which and is really- And then gaslighting them if they don't agree with it. It's it's one thing to try to force them to believe something, but then you shame them when they don't go along with it. 
Exactly. And instead of helping people to accept um, the way that God made them, like I truly believe people were made um, to be who they are. And so I think that, you know, our, our leadership is failing children. All right, real quickly, take on the NCAA.com is the website. This is where you can find out more information about the lawsuit that Caitlin and her teammates and others are uh, party to. Take on the NCAA.com. Take on the NCAA.com. All one word. Stick around for more 